Hey everyone, Michael here today. Today I'm back with another PlayStation 3 video and we're going to fix something called the yellow light of death. This occurs very often on older PlayStation 3 fat models. Uh, this is actually coming right out of a PlayStation 3 uh, fat model. And I've got a couple of videos that you can check out if you want to understand how to disassemble and reassemble your PlayStation 3 fat model. So here I've already disassembled it. And now we're going to take a look at the motherboard. And I have went ahead and I have cleaned these off completely. So if there's any extra thermal grease or um, there's any other thermal paste or anything like that, you want to make sure you get that off and you get that kind of clean. We have a couple of different covers that I have went ahead and pulled off. So there is four that's just listed right up there, as well as there is another one. So the reason that I mentioned that is that just in a second, what I'm going to do is, or when we get into this, I am going to be replacing those pads with some new ones. I would definitely recommend you do that. So Okay, so here is the thermal paste that I bought. Um, I may drop a link into this uh, down below, but basically it is on Amazon. I think I spent about eight bucks for it, but I need it for a bunch of other projects. And I replaced the tip, the tip that was on that. And you can see there's a couple of them here. That's just the stub. It gives you one extra tip. I find that the fine tip, which was the pink one, is actually exactly what I need because what we're trying to do here is to get that flux right in between the chip and the motherboard so that it creates a solid connection when you get to the phase of heating it. So this flux, there's another really good video that shows the difference between using flux and not using it. So what I'm doing is very carefully here is I am just injecting that flux into each of the sides. So And you don't have to be super careful when you're putting this in there. I usually just take a little bit of time. Um, it's okay, in other words, if some of this gets on the motherboard. Um, it's not going to make or break or, or do anything if, it's, if some of it does not land in the place that you expect it to land. These NEC tokens or these capacitors, these are usually what causes a lot of problems as well. So those along with the graphics chip is where more than likely you're going to find some of your problems. There's a lot of videos on taking these chips off or replacing them and doing a bunch of other things. What I found so far, put a little bit of flux in this thing and... Um, use the heating method that I have and hopefully uh, your PlayStation 3 will be repaired just like mine is here. That I'm going to finish cleaning this off and then I'm going to prop this motherboard up where it's actually level. So by default there is a plug that's sticking out of it on the other side uh, that we have looked at during disassembly of one of these things and that plug kind of keeps it where it's not that motherboard doesn't sit like on a flat table so you will need to prop it up a bit um, i believe here i used a book and then here we go i basically just grabbed a hair dryer um, and turned this thing on and i rotated it 
as I was going on both of the chips. So I will obviously start over there with the uh, graphics chip. And I am going to run this uh, for a little bit. I did not run this on a high heat setting. Um, that's one thing that I think you'll see is that a lot of folks in their videos, they use these um, expensive heat guns that you can go out and purchase. They're about 30 bucks. For the most part for this repair, at least the ones I've been working on, you don't really need to do all of that. Um, you need to be able to get that flux in between the chip. And then uh, a hair dryer, something just like this, um, works pretty well, at least uh, for me. Um, so yeah, so just an option there. I did run this on the lowest setting. <clears throat> and yeah, so I rinsed and repeated over both of those chips. And then I worked on the capacitors, which was those NEC uh, chips. Okay, and so now it feels like it's about done. And so how do I test it? Yeah, by actually touching the chip. Okay, and so as you can see, the flux is melted here. Um, you can easily see it around these NEC chips, so like this chip right here. And also you can see these two NEC chips. There we go, and there you can see it a little tiny bit better. And there is each of the NEC chips, so right here there is quite a bit. You can see how that's been working, and then there's some right in between there. Then over on the other side, we have some more flux in here. That's also reaching the other side and then there. And then right here, you can start to see some of the other melted uh, flux. Okay, I think you all have this now. Um, so at this point, uh, you probably want to let this dry for a little bit. Um, usually, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, it usually will be in pretty good shape, especially if you just use the hair, hair dryer. So I'm going to let mine sit, and then we're going to get ready to flip it over. Okay, so I went ahead. These are these uh, pads that you can use they're like thermal pads and what they do is is that they prevent a certain amount of heat uh, from getting through to the other side of the electronics these pads are always worn off on every playstation 3 especially fat playstation 3s <laughs> uh, you are going to want to replace them at this point i mean the console has been around for a little while um, and you can get these pads for also very cheap i think i got i paid eight dollars for a big gigantic pack of these things um, so we're going to cut these out uh, along with the size that we're going to place them on. And so I am now going to cut the first one. I think I did it about halfway there. We just want to cover these chips back up. And you'll note when you first take this apart, especially other PlayStation 4s or PlayStation 3s, these right here are usually always uh, removed these four right here or maybe you can find like a couple of them the others will usually be just lying out there in the console or something like that okay, and there is our main pad we're going to use we're going to put that one right there and then we're going to use all four of these on these four chips it's time now to flip it over and to start doing some work on the other side Now I'm going to use a little bit of help from my trusty keyboard on this side because now we no longer have these prongs which were helping hold it up in the previous one. So I'm just going to flip this over and we're going to spend some time with both of these NEC tokens again. So there we go. We're laying out the, putting some flux down in each of, each of these. Okay. 
I should note that since this repair on this PlayStation 3 Fat, <clears throat> I have used it, obviously, multiple times uh, since then. And then I kind of put it through a bit of a stress test uh, yesterday, which was God of War 3. So if you don't know it, if you really want to to try this out and make sure it really, really works, um, definitely use God of War 3. You can get it for about five bucks. I think I picked it up at five bucks at a used uh, bookstore. Um, so God of War 3, de definitely recommend you to check that out especially for stress, uh, heat stress test. Let's go ahead and let's heat this up first. And we're going to cut a number of pieces and we're going to be putting those in between these areas. And the reason that we're going to do that is, is that we want to provide a little bit of extra support for some of those components that again, we don't want to put too much heat on, on, So there you go. There's your four places you want to put those. I am adding a little bit of heat here to basically make those start sticking uh, right now a little bit better. There is stickiness on the un on the underside of those, uh, but sometimes I put a little bit of heat on it to help it a little bit more. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and let's put the remaining thermal pads on here. This motherboard is ready to go back into a PlayStation 3. Okay, so that just about does it here uh, for today. So this PlayStation 3 motherboard is ready to go right back into its casing and to be powered up and hopefully played for for years to come. Um, one thing I do want to note, though, about this method is, is that sometimes, well, something that you want to keep in mind is, is that this doesn't always mean this console is going to work forever. Um, with these, and especially with that model of the PlayStation, for the most part, you're going to need to, you know, well, you're able to try this. And the disclaimer I want to kind of give here is, is that this method could work for one day, uh, three days, a week, or three years uh, from now. So, Keep in mind that, you know, when you do one of these fixes, um, your mileage may vary, but I believe if you do it right or in this manner, you're going to be able to get hopefully a couple more years out of playing on that console. Also, I would say I recommend picking up another PlayStation 3 console if you can. Um, there's the Super Slim and then there's just the Slim. Um, these things are also very easy to repair and I'll probably be uh, showing you some of the PS3 Super Slim repairs for now. Uh, I believe I had one with a uh, broken CD, uh, broken CD, basically could not read uh, CDs. So anyway, uh, thanks for your time. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Like and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.